Welcome back to the Writer's Room for Run Radio. My name's Trina Wilcox, and today Barry Copeless joins us. Hello, thank you so much for being here. Yes, thanks for inviting me. You've got quite a resume. You've done TV, you've done producing, hosting, and writing, so you just kind of have done the whole media gamut, if you will. Yes, and I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. When I was 16 years old, I was shy as a church mouse. Were and I would you? never get in front of anybody of an audience or on TV or anywhere there's a camera. I was very camera shy. Which is very different from most of society today because we're all out on the social media doing the most. So what turned that around for you? I would say I was always looking for opportunities when I came to Winnipeg about 40 years ago to try something different and challenge myself or step outside of my comfort zone. I come from a small town in Alberta and there's not many challenges in Alberta because everybody knows you. I was born on the farm. So I was very isolated from the city and I didn't have that much exposure to new opportunities to work on TV or film or writing books and speaking, stuff like that. So when I come to the city of Winnipeg, I found a lot of opportunities. I thought, well, I'll give it a shot. And I thought we'd write a, actually I founded a friendship club group. And I thought, gee, maybe I can get on TV with this group. So they were looking for new shows on a local station called VPW11. So I wrote out a proposal and they accepted it. Neat. And so that was my beginning of getting out of my shyness. So you just kind of went in looking for the opportunities. You were very bold. Yes, exactly. And even though I was shy, I still said, well, I want to try this because they said, we'll help you put the show together. We'll mentor you, coach you, whatever you need. If you've never done TV before, don't worry. We're all experts, so we'll help you. So I got mentored and coached. So from that moment on, were you just in love with the whole process of being on TV and seeing everything work from in front of the camera and behind the camera? Or did you just kind of do that one and done for a little bit and come back to it later? No, actually, I got a schedule where I was to do a, a live or tape show, depending on what I want to do, on both sides of the cities every Monday. Really? At 8 in the evening. Because if you want to be live, you could take phone calls. It will go across the city. If you want to be taped, it'll be on the west side of the city, only on video and cable. I said, okay, I'll, I'll, ro I'll rotate. Sometimes I'll do taped, and then sometimes I'll do live where I want to cover the whole city and then take phone calls. So they kind of told me about that content too, like the process. That's interesting. Today, we a lot of people wouldn't have that kind of um, opportunity. What would you suggest to someone who is very interested in learning and, and getting out of their shell as well? See, this particular channel was a community cable station called Videon Cable, VPW, Videon Programming Winnipeg. And our country has a mandate for all cable companies to set up a community station. Mm -hmm. So they take all the profits and some of those profits are put into community cable network. And I just happened to be on VPW 11. I was on there for seven years. And so they had a lot of shows that were produced at this network. And unfortunately when it got sold, uh, Shaw owns the cable company now in Canada. They, they they erased and destroyed all the tapes, all the content. Aww. Luckily, I saved some content on my YouTube channel because throughout the years when I did my computer show, I actually had some pretty high power executives on my show. I'm talking really? Microsoft Canada, the editor of a local computer newspaper, and computer clubs were on Aww. my show. So I want to produce a quality show just like i wrote a quality book now and have a quality podcast because everything i do in life is about quality it's not about quantity it's about quality and believe it or not i got a fan following on the tv show on the all about computers because later on after it all wrapped up i found people said i think i know who you are 
I said, well, we've never met before. <laughs> and they said, well, I used to watch a TV program and you look like the person was on it. I said, was it all about computers? They said, yes, it was. So I met corporate executives and professors at university that watched my program. So that was probably just as exciting for you as it was for them. Oh yeah, it was. Because like I, I say, I, I, got, I got some good content delivered over the airwaves. And you see, that was before the internet, right? There was no right. internet. Right. This is in the early 90s, right? Internet did not exist. So the only way you could get education and information about computer stuff is through TV shows. There mm -hmm. was a TV show on PBS, which I watched, called The Commuter Chronicles. And I was the only other TV show on the airwaves. So well, because my background is in end user support and computer information systems, I'm curious with your program, what kind of content, what were you sharing with the public and your audience? Well, I was sharing new software programs, for example. I would bring, I would get a, a review package from a company and say, okay, we're now going to show you a brand new software package and we're going to step you through the features of it. Okay. Live on the air, on a computer, right? The right. camera would zoom on the computer. We show that, right? Also hardware. Back in those days, we had what's called 300 baud modems and uh, slow speed modems, right? So I would show them how to use the modem and connect it. And I would also show them, okay, if you just bought a brand new computer and you get all these parts out of the box, you probably don't know how to put the parts together. Right. I will step you through exactly what to do. You've got a computer TV screen, you've got a, another box, and you've got some power cables, whatever. I would step them all through that. Oh my goodness, you were their YouTube for that time. <laughs> yeah, I was like a teacher. I like teaching, right? right? And teaching it, it and was very community. necessary because we yeah. were so limited. Exactly. That's amazing. That's very cool. So when yeah. did things start changing and you started moving away from that? Okay, so after they uh, wrapped up my show, then another fellow that watched my show all those years said, Barry, I've got another project for you. I said, really? What is it? He said, well, we'll meet and I'll tell you what it is. So when I met him, he said, I want you to produce a radio talk show. Okay, yes. I said, Don, you know I've never produced a radio talk show. He said, Barry, I watched your TV show all over the years. If you can do a TV talk show with a camera, you can definitely do a radio talk show with no camera. Right. And what do you want me to do? He said, I want to produce a show. I want to get content. I want to get guests booked. And I want to give door prices away. And I want a little segment to talk about my store, what product we would sell, soft or hardware. And I worked that into a one-hour show. That was one hour versus half an hour. Nice. So I didn't know, and this is commercial radio, right? This right. is not community anymore. This is commercial radio. Right. So he actually bought a package, you know, ten thousand dollars package for a year. That said, I want to book a slot on Saturday morning at ten o'clock, and Barry's going to be the producer, and this other guy named Clan Clark is going to be the moderator, okay. and my other fellow, uh, Colin, is going to be the sales guy to talk about products in the store. So we had three people involved. The moderator, the people that worked the board, took the phone mm -hmm. calls, me, the producer, writing the scripts, and mm -hmm. then call in the sales guy. Okay. So how did that settle with you? Were you? Did you love it more than the TV or was it just different? I would say it was different because there's no camera. I, I really enjoyed writing scripts yes. and making them interesting, right? Because I never written scripts before. I never no. went to broadcasting school. Well, I don't think there was any broadcasting school, maybe one back in the 90s, right? So I was all self-taught. And again, Cam Clark, who was the uh, moderator, said, I will teach you what to do. We're mm -hmm. going to take some breaks and commercial breaks, whatever, and I'll teach you what to do. So he did. So we worked as a great team together. You know, the TV show was just me as the yeah. moderator, right? the host, producer. But then I, now I got two extra people, so I got to work in a team now. Okay. And we have to work together for the hour, right? So here you are working really hard at your writing skills. 
Had you done much writing besides for your shows and for TV? Had you done any writing for books or articles at this point? No, I really, I wasn't really much into writing before that. You know, I, in school, I did writing essays, whatever, but I didn't do much writing before that. So I, I said, well, I'll just write a script and see if it's acceptable, if you like uh -huh. it. And they accepted it and it was good. And for the next year, I wrote scripts every week because it was a weekly Saturday morning show. It was what yeah. hour live, right? Live. If if you make a mistake, you can't roll it back. It's a live yeah. show. Yeah. So then when did you start putting your pen and paper or to keyboard, if you will, into book form or, you know, ready to start thinking in terms of putting a manuscript together? Okay, so uh, let me just step back a little bit because sure. after the TV show ended, I still wanted to do storytelling. And so okay. then I brought a video camera okay. and I said, because I missed the interviewing stick part, right? Right. On the yes. TV. So I bought a video camera, a Panasonic 1080p camera, and I took it out and I started visiting people say, I would like to record a story for you. I did that okay. for several, well, 15 years I've done that for. I still continue to this day. And it was only when I couldn't do that anymore, when COVID arrived in the world in Manitoba, I said, no, I can't shoot any more videos. What am I going to do now? I did all these videos, all these interviews. I said, I know what I'll do. I'll see if I can write a book. And the previous book I wanted to write was about video production because I'm a video producer, right? I produce right. videos. Maybe I can teach people on how to shoot videos on a phone, a webcam or whatever, right? And so I said, okay, no, I don't want to do that. I'll write something which I'm good at and that's on networking. I said, I'm really good oh. at networking. So why not write a book on networking? So I got in my head all the people I met over the years, how I met them, where I met them, what the occasions were and what the results of the meetings were. And I started writing. Okay, using we're gonna, we're, we're going to get into that, but I want to back up and I'm glad you backed up to that nugget where I'm all about people blazing their own, own trail or making the work that they want to do without someone always giving them permission to do it. And I love that you just picked up a camera and you said, I love interviewing. I like storytelling. So I'm going to do it. And you found a way to do it. Tell me a little bit more about how were you super confident that people were going to tell you stories or how did you approach them without being nervous? I know that I will get a little self-conscious and be afraid that they're not going to think I am, I, I am good enough to want to share the story with, or that I am qualified enough to share the story with. So how, how did you, how did you go all about doing that? So I would say the, the way I approach people is that I'm a former producer of TV broadcast shows. Mm -hmm. And on my TV show, I interviewed a lot of people. And I would like to know if I could interview you about your story or your business. And that's a very soft introduction, right? Because mm -hmm. one thing I don't do is I'm not a paparazzi. I don't yes. like paparazzi approaches, right? Stick the camera in your face. Right. We want you to tell our story yeah. right now. You know, we're going to ask a lot of questions, bombard you with questions. I don't approach people like that. I said, I'm a video producer. I'm a podcaster, a speaker. And I'd like to know if I could record a story for you. And most okay. often I get yes answers yeah. Yeah. because of the approach I do, right? I'm very soft-spoken. I say, would you like to me to shoot a story about you on, on camera and I've never had too many no's okay what kinds of stories were you telling and then how did you share them were you putting them up on on a website YouTube, or YouTube, yeah, YouTube channel. okay, okay. Yeah. And what so kinds the of kind stories? of stories that I I would find like I like charity organizations yes I have a strong relationship with a lot of charities in Winnipeg and believe it or not I've gone places where the public can't go only because I asked. And you may say, where's that? Well, the top of a 40-story building, for example, right. the rooftop. <laughs> and I actually got up to the rooftop of this big building 
And I actually interviewed people up there to say, why are you repelling down? You know what repelling is? By yeah. rope? <laughs> repelling? <Yes, I> do. <laughs> down this building and aren't you afraid? And yeah. I actually got to interview a lady on CTV, Marilee Crusoe, and she was terrified. And the cameraman said, Marilee, you can't back out because we want to put you on the noon hour news. So oh. I interviewed her after and got a story how she was brave enough to put on the harness and everything and rappel down 40 stories. And it was raising money for charity, right? Yeah, right. But mm -hmm. still, she's never done that in her life before. Yeah. That's a new that's a new thing for her, right? Yes. And what I got to do on the top of this rooftop, I didn't rappel down myself. I might think about future years. I got to lean over the edge and film people going down tethered to a rope that I didn't fall off the building. Yeah. Right. So I, I'm, I'm an adventurous person, right? Creative and adventurous. So when I get to uh, meet people and ask them stories, they always share some compelling stories with me. Okay. So let's take that over to the book. I love the whole networking thing because as a relatively new entrepreneur, I see, have already seen the value in networking and it only takes, you know, one great connection for that to perpetuate more. But I do also know that it is time consuming. A lot of people can be bashful. I have moments where I'm like, feel a little intimidated by a group of people. So what's your wisdom and insight for people starting out? Okay, so here's what I do when I meet a stranger for the first time. I look for signs that we can connect with. Mm -hmm. I'll give an example. When I saw a fellow with a video camera at an event, I walked up and said, oh, I see you've you got a video camera. Are you in broadcasting or are you a freelance media producer? He said, matter of fact, I'm sort of in broadcasting. I said, really? Well, that's interesting because I come from the broadcasting world. And the next thing you know, he says, you know what? I'm actually working with a company now and we we want to produce a experiential marketing video for this company. Would you be interested? I said, absolutely. So we get together. He introduces me to the owner of the company, a franchise Chinese restaurant, buffet restaurant. And we start talking. He says, okay, we want to shoot the inside and the outside of the restaurant. And all of a sudden, we have a relationship formed because of the connection I made. He, he was a translator because the lady didn't speak very good English, mm -hmm. but he was in video. I was in video and we just connected at the right time. Uh, one other thing I'll mention to you. Have you heard of the law of attraction? I have. Or the book, The Secret? Well, I ever have. since I discovered that, I attract people by going out in the world and we make a connection. Mm -hmm. It's the mindset, the positive mindset that I connect with. Mm -hmm. And I just look for signs. Okay. To say, I wonder if there's a connection out in this crowd somewhere. Let me look around. Let me look for signs. And when I saw the guy with the video camera, I said, I think that's a sign. I need to walk up to him, even though I've never met him before, and ask him about his video camera. What kind of shoot? video shoots as you do. Okay. So as you're putting your book together, what's your writing style like? Do you set aside certain amounts of time, particular time, or do you just write when it strikes you? I would say I, a lot of my writing was done in the evening. Okay. I'm like a night hawk person. I like to write in the evening, not in the morning. And so I wrote a lot about the evening, but I would get some ideas that pop in my head and say, oh, I got a great idea. This going in my head. I get back to the computer and write the idea down. So it took quite a while for me to flesh out all the 80,000 words I wrote. Oh, wow. That's how many words in the book. But I would just get all these ideas out of my head or some flashbacks or looking at pictures. You know, I take a lot of pictures of events or video clips or emails I might have read and say, oh, there's a great uh, idea for content in the book. You know, I, and I add that in because you see one thing I've done, which I think is a good idea. I document everything 
I keep all my emails. I keep all my meeting times. I keep everything okay. because I don't have to dig back again. I just dig through my archive stuff and I just pull it out. Okay. Do you have, do you use folders and stuff to organize your emails or do you pretty much just keep it in the timeline that it came in and sort? No, I actually have folders. Okay. I might make a folder like make quality connections book. And I may make another folder, say guests that were, that I met okay. another folder that events that I've attended. Okay. Like I, I make a lot of folders okay. on my Gmail account. When it came time to think about publishing, did you go independent, hybrid, traditional? How did you publish? Okay, so I learned a lesson from another fellow, which I took back in 2017. He actually self-published on a book machine at a bookstore in Winnipeg. Have you ever heard of this kind of process? It's actually a book machine, and you feed all the information in, and it puts out a book. And his book cost $30. And I think there was a base price and so much per page. I said, ooh, that sounds expensive. Ooh. Okay. And I don't like the, the, the format of it, right? He had to sell his book for $30. It was okay. a 500 page, eight and a half by 11 book, right? A fiction book. And then when it went to Amazon, he had to pump up the price to $60. I said, gee, I don't think anybody's going to buy a nonfiction or rather a fiction book for $60. There must be a different way. So then somebody, I went to a lot of webinars before this, right? And somebody said, I've actually published books on Amazon. Oh, how do you do that? Yes. Well, they yes. have this platform called KDP. I said, what does that mean? Kindle Direct Publishing. I said, oh, yes, Tommy Moore. So I thought, well, maybe I'll check out this KDP. Has more than an Amazon customer, right? I buy a lot of stuff at Amazon store. And maybe I'll check that out. So I got to learn a lot about... Kindle Direct Publishing, on that I could upload my book in document format and an ebook, you know, and they would convert to ebook format. So I learned a lot about the do's and don'ts about self publishing on Amazon. One thing it did give me, which I wanted, is worldwide exposure. Correct. Because Amazon's around the world. And also, you could set the price of your book. You could put promotions on, which I did in the early part. And then you could send the link on all your social media. And that was at a very low cost, right? It's Kindle direct is free. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I chose to do. I, I chose to not go the traditional way because if you go the traditional way, you've got to put a lot of money up front, guarantee them 10,000, 50,000 copies, which I'm not going to get, right? And right. so I, I chose Amazon. Thank you for sharing that. I'm wanting more and more people to know the power that they have with publishing. I want more and more people to realize their stories can be told with the power of self-publishing that you don't, not the traditional is bad or hybrid is bad, but there are a lot of advantages for self-publishing as well. And I want people to realize that and feel comfortable that they are, have a lot of control in doing that for themselves. So thank you for sharing that. And do you have another book coming or will it be a while before we see more work from you? Okay, so I'm actually working on a second book okay. because they all, I've always heard this from authors to say, don't stop at just one book and do a one-off book and you'll never hear it from again as an author. Okay. Just like the podcast, don't stop at one, try to do two more, whatever. So I'm actually writing a second book and it's about virtual networking. Oh, great. Okay. So it's going to be called tentatively Make Quality Virtual Connections, okay. How to Up Your Online Network. I love it. Because I've learned about the power of virtual networking. Some people say, I don't have time to waste in front of the computer and talk to total strangers. And I don't want them to get out of it. I said, well, I've actually made some powerful connections for my for my next book. When I, that I just told you, and I've also made some powerful connections for my third podcast show launching soon. I got 55 right. people. You see, <laughs> so I've used the internet and Zoom and other platforms to leverage connections mm -hmm. and build relationships. And that's what people don't get. 
They said, you can't meet any of anybody importance or relativity on the internet. I said, I disagree with you because I have done it. I met people in the movie industry, authors, influencers, CEOs of networking organizations. I met them all. Cool. Cool. So let me ask you what you do to keep your creativity juices going. Are you, uh, you said you're, you like adventure. So tell me what that kind of looks like, how you do a little self-care and taking care of your mind, body, soul. Okay, so now that we got a lot of in-person events happening, I do go to in-person events. So okay. now I can still do my virtual events online and I can do my in-person events because when I do my in-person events, I actually bring my book yes. and talk about it. Cool. And I say, oh, you're an author. I said, yes, here's my real book. Here it is. <laughs> and I show them, you know, talk about the book. And some people say, well, I want to get my phone camera, take a picture of a book. I was just at an event, which I volunteered at recently. And I did some good networking. I gave out my business cards. Here's a little tip for you guys that do business cards too. Put your photograph on the business card. A lady said, if I don't see a photograph on the business card, I'll throw it out. Oh, goodness. So what photograph did you say? Did you think that I put on my business card? Me in my film, I mean, my Make Quality Connections book cover tie. I actually have a tie of my book cover on it. It's marketing, right? Yeah. And I also have buttons made up with the picture of the book cover on it too. So that's a good tip for people is if you're going to make a business card, put your picture on it. Why are okay. you afraid to show people your face? They're going to remember your face more than your name. Okay. Yeah. So there's a tip for your audience out there. Nice. Anything else you want to share? Okay. And I'll give you some tips here now. If okay. you go meet somebody for the first time, I put this in my book. You could use one example of an icebreaker called form. Okay. Each letter stands for something. I'll, I'll, I'll list them out what it stands for. The F stands for family. If you engage with a total stranger, you might start talking about the family. Maybe where he's from, if he's got kids and sports, music, film, whatever. That's okay. a good way to start a conversation. The O stands for occupation. Okay. You would start talking about, oh, I see that you have, you like video. I'm a videographer. Oh, do you do video too? Oh yeah, I do video, lots of video. I work for a video production company. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. interesting. That's the O. And the R stands for recreation. You might start talking about, oh, where are you from? I'm from Calgary, Alberta. What do you know? I'm from Calgary, Alberta myself. I used to go hiking in the Banff Mountains and I went to the lakes and I went all around Jasper and area. He said, oh, I used to go up to Banff too. It's a conversation going, right? At this right. point, you're not selling anything. You're just yeah. trying to get a, a connection. Okay. Made. And the last letter is M All for right. what message you want to communicate to the person. Okay. You want him to give you a business card, say, oh, I understand your video production. Uh, is there any chance maybe we could collaborate together? Do you ever need extra video people? You said you live in Calgary. I actually would fly out to Calgary if you need an assistant. Okay. So it's a message, right? Yes. So I, I, I put all this content in my book and a lot of content came from attending webinars. I Do you know who Ivan Meisner is at BNI Worldwide? I don't know that I do. Okay, don't worry. He is the CEO of the Worldwide BNI, which okay. stands for Business Networking International. It okay. is the largest global of millions and millions of people worldwide, of people that want to connect in business world. Okay. They have meetings and events. So he might be a uh, guest on my podcast. Okay. Possible. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom. I hope you'll come back when your next book is ready to go. Oh, and I just want to make one final comment. Yeah. Besides writing, and, and people might say this is crazy, but I don't think so. I'm actually writing two books at once. Yeah. So you say, wow, really? People only write one book at a time. Well, uh -huh. because one is on the film industry yeah. and one is on networking. 
I can divide the topics on, their, on separate computers and say, okay, now I'm going to think film over here, and now I'm going to go to the other computer and think virtual networking. That does make sense. I'm sure you'd have to be careful when you're writing too as yes. to having an ideal situation like yeah. that. you got to yeah. get in the mindset of one of the film mindset right. when you go to the computer with film. And then you say, if I leave that one, I got to get into the virtual networking mindset now. Right. So I have a good knack in my mind to isolate both topics separately. And I put them on different computers, you know, so I keep the files separately, right? Yeah. I like because it. I hope to have them out by next spring, like both books. That's ambitious, but I have a feeling you'll probably get it done. And I'm launching my film podcast in a few weeks. It's All called right. Ready, Set, Action Live with Barry Hollywood because I do work in the movie industry. Uh huh. And here's another tip for you. If you want to work in the film industry, you must, must network. You will never get a job if you don't network. And I proved the point when I got a job on a production on locations, when I ran into somebody in a back alley with a walkie-talkie, I said, I want to do the job you do. He said, really? How do you know what job I do? I said, I got an idea. He said, I'm going to give you a phone number to call. And you call this guy on Friday. I called the guy on Friday. His name is Johnny Zabadiak. And he said, Barry, you show up Saturday morning at 6 a.m. and you're hired. I said, what? I'm hired. You never met me. Don't worry. We're going to get you orientated. If you've never done location work or production assistant work before, I'll give you all the ropes to learn. Wow. And I got a job four days. I made $1,000 on a production, which was on TV. It was indigenous film. So don't let anybody tell you that by talking to somebody on the street, you're not going to get anywhere with that because I got a job out of this guy with a walkie talkie in the back alley. And I'll tell you one more last story if we have time or not, but I'll tell you one last story. I got a job working for a corporation, which is a crown corporation of the provincial government of Manitoba by attending a Christmas party. There's no way you can get a job by attending a Christmas party. People go there to have fun and drink and whatever. I said, well, yeah, I, ha I still had fun and drink and whatever, but I walked around this party and I started asking people, I said, what is your name? My name is Pauline. My name is Barry. Pauline, where do you work? I work for the Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries Corporation. I said, really? That's very interesting. I'm getting excitement now, right? right. I'm getting excited. She said, like, she's thinking, why are you so excited about what I said? I said, because I've been trying to get a job with your company for two or three years. You right. know the next thing she does? She said, she goes into her purse. She said, here's my business card. I want you to send me your resume as soon as you can to my email address. I said, when I get home, I'll get my resume and I'll send it. The next day I get a phone call from the company said, is this very Copeless? Yes, it is. This is Liquor and Lotteries Corporation calling. I'm the HR manager, and I'd like to invite you for an interview. I got your business card or your resume from Pauline. I said, wow. oh, when can you yep. come in? I said, you name a date and time. How about next Wednesday at 1 o'clock at oh the McClough's Casino? I went there. The interview went so well. Within a week, I was hired and worked there for three years. That nice. is the magic of networking. I I believe, I believe. Thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate, I think we could talk another segment on all of your stories. Yes, it's been and one, wonderful. one final point. I will give people a gift because okay. I'm also a gifter of okay. my ebook, a sampling of my ebook. If they send an email either to you, I'll have to I forward it to you. It's a sampler copy. It's about 12 pages. And when you read my sampler version, you will want to get the full version, either paperback or the ebook, because okay. I got some powerful content in the sampler. So they can find it on Amazon and do you have a website? They can go to find out more. Yes. From you. I'm going to put this in the chat box here. It's called Prairie. Dash multimedia. 
Indigenous Productions. .ueniweb.com. And there's a form they can fill out. All right. That's it. Prairie Multimedia Productions. .ueniweb.com. And if they put in their email address, I'll be happy to send them a sampler version of my ebook, Make Quality awesome. Connections. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Barry. I appreciate it. Well, thanks very much for inviting me. And I hope that people have got a good lesson on how to network and what to do when you meet a total stranger. I think we do. Thank you so much. You're welcome.